Hi guys, we are up to episode six of American Gothic. Um, this is around this time in the last episode as well. The numbers can get a little bit confusing. So I'm just to remind you, like I'm watching it in production order, um, not the order that it aired in. Um, and Grim is here with me. So he may put forth an opinion at some point. Um, so our main plot in this episode is about, uh, follows Gail basically. So we open on a flashback in 1985 and we have a nurse called Holly and she's um, approaching her car in the parking lot at night and the sheriff comes up to her and he's like, I'm afraid you're under arrest for stealing my heart. Like, I mean, honestly, honestly, <laughs> pick up lines in the 90s. Anyway, um, they're in a relationship and he's convinced her to steal a file for him that has Caleb's birth record on it and I think something to do with the um the Caleb's mother's suicide so she's kind of figured out that he's the father so he runs the car off the road into the river and then we get the opening credits so um I really like these opening sort of bits before the credit sequence I think they're nicely done and they're a good little introduction to the show um this episode is called dead to the world and it well, I guess that title will make sense um, a little bit later. I think the theme song is different in this episode as well. It doesn't have this kind of cheesy choral like whoa, 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 thing going on. Um, anyway, <laughs> moving right along from there. Um, our first subplot is Caleb and his friend from school, Boone. Yes, his name is Boone. <laughs> I love that. You just don't hear names like that. Um, so they're doing archery practice for a contest and the sheriff tries to kind of tutor Caleb because that's, this is just, this is what they do with each other. Apparently these two. So he's trying to make Caleb more like himself and he gets him to kill an innocent animal. And then Caleb feels awful. Merlin feels awful. And they have a conversation, Caleb and Merlin, that he can't ignore the bad side of himself and he'll have to, like, deal with it as opposed to running from it. Um, the sheriff intervenes to try and get Caleb to win the competition. I think he thinks that doing that will make Caleb like him. So he gets the teacher to keep Boone back after class so he misses practice. Um, he gives him a really fancy bow and he tries to coach him to psych out the competition and stuff like that. He also has this thing where he's like, there's no room for friendship on the battlefield. And, um, he tries to convince Caleb that his friend Boone is really his enemy. And like the sheriff is the only person that he can trust kind of thing to try and like, I guess I kind of like this because the way he's trying to isolate Caleb and get him to not trust anyone else feels like a kind of realistic thing that a psycho would do, you know? Um, but yeah, Caleb is nobody's fool and he's sort of halfway through the competition is like, I don't want to win the fake way. So he gives back the fancy bow and he lets Boone win fairly basically. And then he's even happy for him. And Merlin looks on from just across where the great lighting is. <laughs> And she just smiles. It's like, it's very kind of cheesy, but we'll allow it. We have another subplot where we get to know the deputy more. I'm actually starting to really like his character. Um, he felt like a little bit generic in episode one, but now I kind of feel like he's, um, I don't know. He's kind of more likable. He's kind of just a human being figuring things out. And, you know, so we follow him where he's going to visit he's sort of off duty and he goes to visit his ex-wife and his son and he's going to intervene because her new husband is like beating her up and um he's not happy about that obviously who would be when we meet her she is whitewashing a lawn jockey and she seems surprised that people think lawn jockeys are racist and that if she just paints this lawn jockey bright white that that's just going to make it all fine. 
And I feel like this could be an interesting sort of metaphor, you know, for the town, or it could just be a great way to show like the kinds of people that live in Trinity. Um, but I think it's kind of, it's good writing, I guess, because it kind of tells you a lot without actually using any dialogue. But anyway, so he gets his butt kicked by his ex-wife's new husband and he says he doesn't want the sheriff's help but the sheriff goes behind his back and talks to um the man anyway um the doctor tells the deputy to um like that it's important to get involved because the the deputy's son is seeing this and it can have a really negative impact on him obviously and he says why don't you just talk to your son like just start there um but later on he goes back to talk to the guy and we see that the sheriff is um sorry my cat's distracting me Uh, he sees that the sheriff we see sorry that the sheriff is intervening and the sheriff makes this ex-husband fall on his buzzsaw which is not what the deputy wanted or asked for anything like that so I'm wondering if this could technically be attributed to the deputy later. Like maybe the sheriff can use it against him if he doesn't fall into line. There's also a little healing um, in the relationship between the deputy and his, and his son. We see like sort of at the end of the episode. So that's quite nice. Um, but our main event of the episode is Gail and her looking into Holly's death. So she was actually friends with Holly when she was a kid and she doesn't know that Holly has died. So she just turns up at Holly's mom's place um, looking for more information um, on Caleb and hoping to talk to Holly about it. Um, But and then she finds out. So while she's there, she finds out that the sheriff and Holly were in a relationship. So she goes to confront him. But whilst we're here, we see the most intense floral wallpaper which is so like it's so 1995 it's amazing and also um holly's mom sells avon and i just think there's something about that that's so of that time and says a lot about her character i know like my mom when i was a kid bought avon she didn't sell it but um avon parties and stuff like that were big so um yeah i i just It was very sort of just something I noticed, basically. So uh, let's see. Gail gets Holly's car taken out of the river, and it's obvious that the sheriff didn't even really look for the car, but there's no body in it, and she figures out that Holly couldn't have been driving. So um, she figures out that Holly's actually not dead, but in a sanitarium. And when she goes to see Holly at that place, she finds out that Holly was submerged in water for four minutes and the lack of oxygen has given her damage to the brain. Honestly, the way Holly speaks, she just talks about the sheriff and like how she's like in love with him and their romance. And I think maybe, I mean, the implication might be that it's more like a supernatural, some kind of curse or something that the sheriff has done rather than literal damage to the brain. I don't know. That's just something that I suspect. Um, The sheriff interrupts and he says, you know, if you get in the car, I'll show you what happened. And then he tries to convince Gail that Holly tried to kill them both. And then he tries to distract her by kissing her, which is like weird. He seems to think that Gail is like super into him and that her problem is just that not like she's giving him sass because she wants to be his girlfriend I think is his opinion um, so then Gail goes back and talks to Holly's mom about Holly and says you know don't hide her away just because she's not perfect and not like a big achiever anymore you should bring her home she's not like less perfect but Holly's mom does these makeovers and she's obsessed with perfection. So when she does bring her home, she's like kind of not really, she makes Holly wear like a nurse's dress and study for nursing exams. But like Holly 
can't even really understand like where she is and her surroundings and stuff. So I thought that was kind of creepy that the mom seems so normal and nice, but she's actually like kind of weird and obsessive. And the, the theme or the trope of hiding away from society that like, it's better that your daughter, people think your daughter is dead than that. They think that she's not perfect or that she's damaged in some way. I feel like that's very Southern Gothic kind of, or even just Gothic fiction, um, kind of a trope. So it's, uh, on theme, I guess. <laughs> um, so that's kind of it for the episode. Just, um, is there anything else I wanted to say about it? This is more like part of the overarching narrative. So we get a little bit of character development. Um, I feel like the, the, the sheriff kind of trying to get by Caleb's affection and stuff is kind of, hopefully that I don't just keep doing that because it feels a little bit like it was good, but it, if you overdo it, it's just going to feel like filler, you know? So I'm hoping that we have some kind of development there. Um, but yeah, that is episode six.